welcome to a special Valentine's Week edition of Faith and Friends. I'm Jennifer. It's Valentine's Day. Week? I Mark guess Andy Coons. got the memo. That's we didn't. <laughs> I was going to say, you know it's Valentine's Week. We wear this every week year. Because he has unveiled. I used to have a red shirt, though, that went along with it. So it was red on red with the white doctor jacket. Doesn't it just inspire Valentine's Day? What I like Day? about that jacket is you can also double it up and use it for your Colonel Sanders costume every year. And that is on National Chicken Day. <laughs> when is National Chicken Day this year? <laughs> you, you know it never any, changes. You know it's anything the same about day us. Every year. <laughs> we will probably celebrate National Chicken Day. Oh, I don't know. Much. I don't know if I'm. I might be a little bit too scared to celebrate National Chicken Day. Really? Scared chicken, Brady cat, <laughs> oh whatever. <laughs> you were thinking, why were you a buffalo chicken at one point? You're going to be buffaloed and put in sauce. That didn't go very well. We're about 20 seconds in the show, and I think. <laughs> Please don't change the channel. It's going to get better, <laughs> I promise you're you. You're not going to want to change the channel because we have some fantastic stuff coming up in today's show, including a special trip to a truck stop in Beaverdam. We'll also tell you about a program designed for step parents, and it's a musical day here at TV44. The Lima Bean course is here, and they'll tell us about a special offer they have for this Valentine's week. And that is going to lead us right into our scripture verse of the day, which is Psalm 96, 1 through 4a, and it says... Oh, sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Sing to the Lord, bless his name. Proclaim the good news of his salvation from day to day. Declare his glory among the nations, his wonders among all the peoples. For the Lord is great and greatly to be praised. I think you look like you are set to go sing to somebody. You're just, you've got the look, you've got... I think what kind you of do look it. do I have? <laughs> you got the costume. Thank you. I'm dressed up it's as a, a mascot costume. for Valentine's Day. Not a costume. That was the wrong word to say. I would love to sing to somebody. So there you go. Please don't sing. I've heard you sing. I won't sing to Mark. Nobody wants to hear that sing. <laughs> but, I mean, that's one of the great things about music, though, is that you know we're all differently blessed, and not all of us are blessed with the best of singing voices, but that doesn't mean we can't enjoy music, and it doesn't mean that the Lord can't use music to touch people in ways that Aren't, they aren't, uh, aren't necessarily touched just by the word alone. That's very true. Mm -hmm. That's right. Uh, and even though some people maybe sitting behind us in church are singing off key a little bit, I still love to hear them because they're belting it out and they mm -hmm. are making a joyful noise. Sometimes my two and a half year old daughter Anna will sing at the top of her lungs and Nathan says, Anna's being too loud. Well, I, we tell her, we tell Nathan, she's making a joyful noise. And that's exactly what God wants from us. He wants to hear us belt out to him regardless of whether we're on key or off key and sometimes when we are off key is when we can give him everything we desire when when we just let all of our everything down we don't care if it sounds perfect we don't care if we've got the words right we just want to reach out to christ reach out to god and that's that's where he wants us to be and it's important to sing in your heart and if you're singing in your heart it doesn't necessarily matter what's coming out of your mouth. Well, music is just one of the special events planned for the upcoming Transport for Christ Banquet. It's set for the 21st of this month, and if you've not reserved your place yet, you definitely want to learn more about an incredible ministry nestled in Beaverdam, making an impact for Christ all across the country. Andy has more. Tucked in the back corner of the pilot truck stop in Beaver Dam is a special semi-truck inviting people inside. It's the Transport for Christ Second Chance Chapel with a special mission to reach out to any truck driver no matter where they are in life. There's a, there's a lot of stuff out there that's, that's not real good, you know, a lot of temptation. So it's a good safe place for them to come. Uh, like I say, a place uh, that they can have Christian fellowship. Yes, this is a safe place for Christian fellowship, staffed by volunteer chaplains seven days a week. The Transport for Christ is frequented by Christian truck drivers. They are one of three types of people who regularly walk through this door. The second group, those needing a listening ear. So many drivers are away from family and friends for weeks on end, so this place can be a respite. And then there's the third group. There's someone who realizes uh, that they need something in their life. They need Christ in their life. And, and that those are the ones that come to us that, uh, that we're really here for. I mean, we're here for all of them, but we love, we love when that happens. And it's so neat at, uh, oh, at the holidays how uh, different drivers will text you and, and tell you how much, you know, the chapel means to them. 
The Transport for Christ offers drivers consistency, and in some ways it serves as Sunday church. Yes, we have service at 11 and then 7, and we would do anything through the week if a driver would come in and want to do a Bible study or anything like this, we could do that or whatever they'd like to, you know, do. And then in the uh, summertime, we was uh, given a golf cart, and we'd go around the parking lot here and uh, actually uh, pick the guys up that are way out there, and they'll say, why do you want to do this? Well, you got to start someplace. Currently, efforts are underway to put a second chapel across the street at the Flying J truck stop. And if God opens that door, studies indicate good things are sure to come. And, and they found at the truck stops where a chapel is located, there is less problems out there with the drugs, uh, prostitution, uh, that type of stuff. The Transport for Christ Second Chance Chapel in Beaver Dam run by volunteers and in just a few weeks the public has the chance to not only support those involved with this ministry, but also to sow into it financially. Uh, February 21st, we're gonna have a banquet up at uh, Bluffton University Marbeck Center and we're bringing the Pifers back again, and they were very well accepted last year. In fact, we got a whole new bunch of people wanting to come this year that didn't get to come last year. And uh, we're excited because uh, we see God working. That Second Chance Chapel Banquet, which is the ministry's annual fundraising banquet, is free to attend. However, a free will offering will be collected Great opportunity there. Luganville says Transport for Christ is hoping that a second chapel service in Beaver Dam, second chapel, this one at the Flying J truck stop just across the street. Very cool. What a great ministry. That annual banquet takes place at the Marbeck Center at Bluffton University. Mm. Again, it's February 21st, 6.30 p.m. is the start time. The Pifers will offer the musical entertainment for the night. I've heard great things about them. Yeah. Call 419-230-3294 to reserve your place and show your support for Transport for Christ in this region. We love that. Mm -hmm. Now, do you know what's taking place this week? Do you have any um, <laughs> ideas what might be going on <laughs> this week? I just think that should any be your idea? regular clothing. I don't know why you need to have it just for... You heard that. I'm now allowed to wear this more than one day <laughs> a year, and I will. Valentine's Day is, of course, the 14th, depending on when you're watching this program. They have already had a great Valentine's Day, or you may be... Very excited for the uh, candy hearts. You know, I like the gummy ones. Those are good. Or the peanut butter cup hearts. So or do, the you, do you buy them corn hearts before or, Valentine's Day or do you wait till after Valentine's Day so you can get them 50% off? Yeah, we celebrate Valentine's Day, March the 14th. We can have all the same candy at half the price. Isn't that great? And he will gladly take your donations of candy at any time. And he'll probably thank you profusely on TV. I do that once in a while. Once in a while. So, either way, we want you to know about something special that is available besides half price candy after the holiday. That's right. How about some good old fashioned singing Valentines? Available from some of the best barber shoppers the Lima area has to offer. Here's a sneak peek at what you could have as a special Ooh. singing Valentine. Well, thank you. We're joined now by a few of the members of the Lima Bean Course. And I, I guess, Rick, you've kind of been designated the spokesman. First, I want you to introduce okay. who we have today. Uh, to my uh, left is Ron Bennell singing bass and Dan Deinsberger next to him singing lead, and Luke Suarez singing tenor, and I sing the baritone part. All right, why don't you guys uh, entertain us with uh, one of your selections. Sure. Last night alone on our way home, you turned and said to me, to me I love you so and I want to know what do you think about me, about me? Sweet and lovely, that's what you are to me. Sugar and spice and everything nice, you're all a girl should be. blushing bride I will smile all the while you're by my side by my side I will smile all the while you're by Oh! 
So we'd add a line, a classic song, sung classically by the Lima Bean Chorus. And, and Rick, first off, as we mentioned earlier, this is just a small group. How big is the chorus when it's full strength? We have roughly 45 singers and uh, been in existence for 66 years. And many, many of the singers have been part of the group for several of those years. Now, depending upon when you're watching this, it's either a couple of days or might actually be Valentine's Day already, but there is still an opportunity to, to have the, the chorus come out to serenade a Valentine? Well, it would be just a quartet. Uh, we usually have two or three quartets going on Valentine's Day. Uh, this year, uh, Friday the 14th, uh, we'll have uh, val Valentine quartets out all day. And then we also will be selling Valentine's on the 15th as well on Saturday. How can people go about booking you guys for Valentine's Day? Uh, I, th probably the easiest way is to go to our website at uh, www.limabean, L-I-M-A-B-E-A-N-E, chorus.org. And the instructions are there on the website. Big spring concert coming up as well in a few weeks. Give us a little bit of the information behind that. Uh, that is on uh, April 5th, Saturday. There will be two shows at uh, 2.30 in the afternoon and 7 o'clock in the evening. And we have two uh, guest quartets coming um, and the Lima Bean Chorus. And it's, we expect it to be a good time. It is every year. Where is that at? It's at, at the Lima Civic, Civic Center. And finally, I think the question everybody has whenever they see the Lima Bean Chorus perform, where do you get those red jackets? Um, I, we stole them somewhere, <laughs> and uh, here we are. So, One of the unsolved mysteries of the Lima Police Department, the case of the stolen red blazers. Well, thank you very much. Ron. <laughs> okay, we're going to pin it on Ron. Back to you guys, and thank you to the Lima Bean Course for uh, all they do, and great job singing as always. Thank you, Mark. That's very entertaining for sure. Maybe you should give him a call. Well, as we continue with Black History Month, another look this week at a famous historical figure who credits God for his talents. George Washington Carver is a well-known chemist and agronomist. He was born into slavery in the 1860s. Carver became director of agriculture research at Tuskegee University in Alabama. Now, among his notable accomplishments, he developed crop rotation methods for conserving nutrients in soil and discovered hundreds of new uses for crops, such as peanuts, and thanks to his efforts, by 1940, peanuts were the second largest cash crop in the South. When asked about his incredible abilities and successes, what did Carver say? And he said, I didn't make these discoveries. God has only worked through me to reveal to his children some of his wonderful providence. Another great story for you right there. And speaking of great stories, Jennifer joins us now with Lori Sugar in Smart, Smart Steps program. Thank you, Andy. We're going to take a few minutes now and move into a topic that actually is pretty near and dear to my heart. We're going to talk about step parenting. I have been a step parent for about two decades. It has been a blessing, but anybody who is in a step family situation knows that there are ups and downs, there are roller coasters, but if God is at the forefront and through it all, let me tell you, there can be success and there can be some great, wonderful things that can happen. Lori Sugar is here with me today. We're going to talk about a, a program that's coming up uh, that's called Smart Steps, a six-week program. But before we get into the details of that, let's just first talk about why, why it's important for step families or parents who are going to be step parents to think ahead about this type of thing, about what they're getting into. I think that's the perfect thing is to think ahead. And a step family is not anything like a traditional family, as you well know. And so we've got to always be thinking, how are we going to make this work? Because it's just not the same. What are some of the key principles that maybe parents, step parents, don't think about ahead of time that they get into that are a little bit surprising? I think one of the most difficult things is trying to put your marriage first. In a traditional home, you have several years usually where it's just the two of you and you build that home and you build that relationship. And in a step family, you're just thrown in there together and all of a sudden you're an immediate family. So how do I make that couple relationship work? Which we think is key. We think God has to be first and then the uh, couple relationship has to be second and then the children. And I think that's the biggest thing we teach our children is that my spouse is my most important human relationship. It's hard to do when the whole blood is thicker than water and I, you know, I've lived with these kids for years and this mm -hmm. guy is just coming in. You know, how am I gonna make that work? You know, there's statistics that unfortunately suggest that second marriages, especially ones with children involved, are, are less likely to 70%, continue. 70%, 70% end in divorce. 
And do you think that's because people are not walking into it prepared and recognizing what they need to do to I don't, make this work? I think you're right. I don't think people are prepared. I don't think they know what to expect. You know, I, when I first got married, I thought, okay, my problems will be different than traditional families, but everybody has problems. Well, I had no idea what those problems were and how to tackle them. So when we went to friends in traditional marriages, their advice just didn't work for us and they didn't understand what we were going through. So let's talk about the uh, the class that's coming up, Smart Steps. It's going to take place at Lima Community Church. It starts February 18th. It's weekly on Tuesdays through March 25th. It's a six-week faith-based course, and some of the topics, couple relationship, realistic step-family expectations, stages of step-family development, legal and financial issues, a lot of really important things here. How, is this, how does this course lay out? Well, we, we begin with talking about step families in general and how we got here. And, you know, step families aren't uh, a new thing. Mm -hmm. It's not a new phenomenon. And every day, we, these absolutely. days, it's probably more likely to have that than not. Right. And we take it all the way back to King David and the issues that he had in, a, in step family life. So w we're not new, but we need to look at how we're going to do things right. Um, and it, right to us is going to be different than, again, right to a traditional family. So we kind of build on that then. We... Um, intersperse marriage uh, information as we go along because again we think that is so important to a mm -hmm. step family and then the expectations when you said expectations that really really stuck out to me because we talk about that a lot and maybe not to lower your expectations but mm -hmm. to be careful of what you expect other people to to do in that step family um, I think you have to have very broad shoulders and let a lot of things roll off of them because Again, it's just a different, different animal. I know a lot of people have asked Dan and myself how we have been successful in our, in our blended family, and I just continually have to give God the credit. Absolutely. I would venture to guess that your course is also going to point people to Christ. Absolutely. We kind of use that triangle where it's husband, wife, and if you're both moving towards God, you're going to move closer together. And I think that's the biggest thing that we found. When we stop trying to change each other, mm -hmm. we stop, stop trying to change each other's children, and both started moving towards Christ, things started to get better for us. And then our, the biggest thing we want to show our children is what a, a marriage is supposed to look like, a, a God-centered marriage mm -hmm. is supposed to look like. And when that happened, things got so much better, which oh. I'm sure you know. That's excellent. So Lori, if somebody wants to register, what do they need to do for the They class? can either call me um, personally or probably the best yep, idea. We got the number on the screen there. Is, yes, the uh, Step Forward Men at AOL.com is probably the easiest way to get a hold of us. And registration is simple. It costs nothing. It's free. Um, we just need to know who's coming. And if you have children, third grade and above, we do have a class for them so that they can uh, again, get some information on how to deal with the things that they're faced with. Oh, you excellent. know, kids don't ask for this. Yeah, excellent. All right, Lori, thank you so much. Thank you also to Bill for the ministry that you have to help families. So don't forget, you can sign up for that Smart Steps class. We'll give you the number again in just a moment, uh, the email address as well. And there is a class for third grade on up. So if you've got stepchildren involved, this looks like a great, great opportunity. All right, we're moving now over to Zach Bowers, who's continuing his, uh, his series with Bill Harris. Ephesians 6, 11 says to put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. It is this spiritual warfare we are all engaged in that Bill Harris examines this week. While discussing his latest series, Total Surrender to God, Bill illustrates how we are to commune with God in spirit in order to further equip us to fight this spiritual war. Spirit and soul. To me, to most people, what's the difference? Yeah. They, they seem to be the same, they but do. in our four-part series that you're uh, going over, that you're discussing, with, it, which is Total Surrender to God, you say, no, there's, there's a difference between the two. Right. In, in Hebrews, God says he divides asunder the spirit and the soul. And then he talks about the marrow and the joints. Mm -hmm. That's the body, of course. So he makes a distinction. And I think we have to understand the, the difference between the two is the soul. That is the, uh, the essence of who you are in terms of personality and the like. Mm -hmm. But the spirit is that part of you which you commune with God with. In fact, I would put it this way, Zach. You are a spirit, not just that you have a spirit. You are a spirit. You have a soul and they live in a body. And so God made you in his own image and it's spirit like spirit. Our spirit communes with God and, and, and vice versa. 
when God deals with us, it first starts in our spirit. Now, the soul and the body get involved. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we may tear up and cry with our emotions and things like that, sure. or we may raise our hands and give him worship. Uh, we may want to say hallelujah or something of that <laughs> nature, but it starts with the spirit. And, and when our spirit connects with God's spirit, that's fellowship and that's a relationship yeah. and that's intimacy. And so even they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Think of the people who go to church and their spirit never connects with God. We well, haven't had worship. You might have listened to a nice service, but you haven't really connected with God mm -hmm. unless your spirit connects with him. On well, part of your, your series that I've seen you, uh, you're actually an artist. Most people may not know that. <laughs> yeah, you <do>. full one, <laughs> very full one. <laughs> you do some drawings in your teaching uh -huh. and you've shown the different elements, the body, the soul, the spirit, mm -hmm. and how in, uh, in an incorrect uh, life, perhaps the body is the largest element. Yeah. It's being fed the most. Mm -hmm. But the spirit, in, through your teaching, you tell the spirit is the most important to feed that and that'll yes. carry over. Because once you are surrendering to God in terms of the spirit, well, the total surrender, but the spirit will begin to take its direction from the Holy Spirit. Mm. The Holy Spirit comes to dwell in us. And where does he dwell? He dwells in your spirit, your yes. human spirit. And then that spirit begins to have influence and to dominate the soul, your mind, your will and emotions. And then that will spill over to the body of your five senses so that you will behave. Hmm. That's the way it works. Right. And uh, we have to, it, it's, and I try to make it as simple as possible so people can digest it. It's the word of God. And when we digest the word of God, take it in, meditate on it, confess it and put it into action. That is put legs on our faith. Then yeah. we realize results. And is that where we start? Do we start in the word? Do we start in that yes. fellowship with God? Yes. That, that communion, just like you would do uh, in your normal devotion. If you're starting your day in the morning with God, you want to spend time in his presence, letting your spirit and his spirit connect. And that gives you the guidance for the day. It, it gives you a mindset, Zach, yes, yes. that helps you through your day. Otherwise, we're moving in human strength. And so many of us, despite the fact that we have access to God's spirit, we're moving on our own human strength. Hmm. That's not necessary. Yes. So we've talked about the body, we've talked about the soul, we've talked about the spirit. Part four, spiritual uh, warfare. Yes. Maybe a surprise title to some, maybe an element that we don't often think too much about, yeah. but we are in a war, a spiritual war. We are, and let me put it succinctly, the devil is out to get us. Yes. And we must understand in total perspective here that he is a defeated foe. Christ defeated him at the cross, but that doesn't stop him from trying to tempt us. The warfare is in our resistance mm. to him. That's where the warfare comes in. A lot of times we think that the warfare is well in the elements in the heavens. Well, there is a warfare there too. But the number one thing that God wants us to bring is ourselves under submission to him because the greatest war comes from within. For many of us as Christians, the greatest battlefield we have is the one between our ears. Absolutely. Satan trying to mess with our minds and trying to distort our will or distract our will and trying to mess up with our, our emotions and the like. So. Even, even James said, you know, from whence come the warrings and the fightings? Don't they come from within? Mm. And there's an old African proverb that says that if there is no enemy within, the enemy outside can do me no harm. <laughs> so when we get ourselves together with God, there's no enemy out there in the elements that we can't face with God on the inside. Christ within the hope of glory. Yes, yes. And so the takeaway is if we're feeding our spirit, we're feeding our soul, ultimately feeding our body in yes. an appropriate way. Right. We're able to fight that spiritual war. That's right. That we can look within, we can know what the enemy is trying to do and prevent right. that. You mentioned uh, words there briefly, or thoughts rather. Mm -hmm. How crucial our thoughts are in the effect that they can have on our mindset, yes. our outlook on life, yes. and our overall perspective. You are what you think about. Yes. And this is why the Bible tells us to meditate. When we meditate on God's word, meditation is the opposite of worrying. Mm -hmm. You ever have a thing that you're worrying about and you think about it constantly? Mm -hmm. Well, when you meditate, you think about what you're meditating on constantly, about the things of God. If you're having trouble in one area of your life, let's say it's trouble in your finances, think about those scriptures where God t promises to bless us financially. If it's a thing where you've got a physical challenge in your health, think about the scriptures where God promises good health and the like. So whatever you're dealing with, get those scriptures, meditate on them, and then confess them. That is, open your mouth and express them. And there's faith going out with that, and it really helps us in the long run to overcome. Uh, yes. And so maybe some encouragement today that we can provide within the spiritual warfare, acknowledging that there's going to be battles lost, that daily yes. we're going to have to fight something that seems overwhelming. 
But there is encouragement there, and, and ultimately we know who is victorious. Absolutely. We are on the side of the victor, yes. and that's why Christ has asked us to be with him. When you think about the fact that he went down to hell for you and me, suffered in hell, then went over to the devil and said, the keys to death and hell, turn mm -hmm. them over. <laughs> Christ now has the keys to death and hell. The devil doesn't have the keys to his own home. And Christ is, you know, keys represent authority. Yes. He has given us authority to be overcomers. The devil doesn't want us to know that. He wants us to run and hide and scoot behind our, 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 our frailties right. and our weaknesses Power in the light. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So we have to recognize, and sometimes we have to do what David said. David, David said this, let the weak talk to himself. Mm -hmm. Let the weak say, I am strong. You know, there's nothing wrong with talking to yourself like that. I talk to myself all the time. I get better answers. No, <laughs> <laughs> no but seriously, you talk, you talk to yourself and you say positive things from the Word of God that help propel you in life, really. Boy, some powerful stuff there. Thank you, Zach, and thank you, Bill, as well. Just how can we surrender everything? Mm. How can we let go of the things that we hold so tightly to that are so important to us but not as important to God. How can we say, Here, here's what I want, here's what I want, God, you take it and make it what you want. What a challenge to be able to do that, to stretch ourselves, to be willing to change our habits in our lives, but how God can do such great things when we are willing to do that kind of thing. No question. Well, quick moment now to remind you, you can contact us anytime with thoughts, ideas, prayers. How are you trying to surrender? Maybe we can pray along with you during that journey. You can find us on Twitter, Mark Kuntz 44, Andy Lynch 44, or the newly added Jen Beck 44 as she has moved from the private life of some other Twitter name to the 44 life of Jen Beck 44. I still have working homeschool mom though. And that is, I follow that one. And I haven't heard any updates about how I can be a better working homeschool mom, so help me. There's part of that equation you have a trouble with. And for extra encouragement, check out Andy's Points of Life devotional page. You can find it on our website, also on Facebook and through Twitter. Jennifer also has some of her own thoughts to share on her One Minute of Inspiration page, which can be found at WTLW.com. Well, we want to take a moment to say thank you for your partnership. We, first of all, we would not be here doing what we're doing if it wasn't for God's direction, guidance, and His favor. But secondly, it is your partnership through your prayers and your financial giving that has allowed TV44 to continue being a beacon of light now for more than three decades. Really a miracle. Wow. We're just so thankful. I'd like to thank Brenda from, let's see, Columbus Grove. Thank you so much for your gift. Also, Sam Schmeezing from Coldwater, a monthly pledge. And we have a prayer request here, health for our family and friends. So we certainly are praying along with you as their health issues are always abounding, it seems, in this world. Sin has denigrated both morally and physically. You know, that's why there are so many viruses in the world. And so we will pray along with you for that. Betty from Salina sent in a nice note along with her gift this month. Please keep up the good work. I'm praising God that the goal was met for this year. And that's right, our campaign 2014 was success because of folks like Betty, along with the Horsons from Lyme, who also contributed to our campaign 2014. And we want to remind you that there are great, easy ways for you to continue investing into the ministry. Of course, you can call us and give by phone. You can give online securely at any time. There's also automatic withdrawal options. So you don't have to think about writing another check. All of those things, you can know that every dollar you invest focuses completely on investing in the kingdom for Christ. Well, that will wrap it up for us on this edition of Faith and Friends. One more look at our scripture, though, before we go, Andy. I'd love to do that. Psalm 96, 1 through 4a. Oh, sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Sing to the Lord, bless his name. Proclaim the good news of his salvation from day to day. Declare his glory among the nations, his wonders among all the peoples. For the Lord is great and greatly to be praised. Join us next week. We'll have a lot more fun stuff here on Faith and Friends. So I want to thank all of our guests this week for taking time to stop by. And what great singing by the Lima Bean oh, Chorus. I mean, absolutely. if you can stand up there, not only sing as well as that, but look as good as they did in their red blazers, they got nothing on Andy with those coats. <laughs> I need a red blazer for next year. We'll see if I can get I that. Think, I still think you could sing. Well, thank you. All right. Have a great day, everyone. Thanks so much for joining us. Make sure you tune in again next week. <laughs>